welcome back. If you're aiming to turn the complexity of the stock market into your next big win, you're in the perfect spot. This is not just about making investments. It's about making smart moves that can amplify your financial prowess. Whether you're a beginner or looking to hone your stock skills, stick around. Let's unlock the secrets together. A call option isn't just a financial term, it's your secret weapon in the investment battlefield. Think of it as a golden ticket, allowing you to buy an asset at a predetermined price within a set time frame. This isn't about being bound to buy, it's about having the option to buy when the price is right, leveraging your position to maximize gains while your risk is limited to the price paid for the option, the premium. It's smart investing made simple. You harness the power of market trends to secure profits while shielding yourself from bigger losses. Call options function on a straightforward yet profound principle. They give you the right to lock in a purchase price for an asset, betting on its price increase. You pay a premium for this potential, which is a small price for big flexibility. By understanding key components like strike price, premium, and expiration, you position yourself to make moves that can lead to substantial gains. It's about making educated guesses and turning them into profitable strategies. Using call options isn't just about betting on stock prices. It's about strategic foresight. Whether you opt for a long call to capitalize on market upswings or a short call to generate income or protect your portfolio, each strategy offers distinct advantages. The art lies in choosing your strategy based on your market outlook and investment goals. From speculative plays to hedging tactics, call options provide a flexible toolkit for navigating the financial markets with precision and confidence. The true value of call options is demonstrated in their versatility across various market scenarios. From speculating on stock price increases to managing portfolio risks, call options are pivotal. They allow investors to leverage market movements for higher returns and offer a safety net during downturns. By integrating call options into your investment strategies, you equip yourself with the tools to manage and enhance your financial portfolio actively. Embarking on mastering call options is about blending theory with practice. It starts with a solid grasp of fundamental principles and evolves into applying these insights to navigate real market conditions. This journey isn't just about achieving profitable trades, it includes developing robust risk management tactics to protect your investments. Continuous learning and staying attuned to market dynamics are crucial as you advance your skills and strategies at options trading. And for those diving deeper into investing, I give real-time trade alerts in my Patreon, and if you'd like to try my TradingView custom indicators, there's a free trial link in the description below. With that out of the way, let's go over an example. Let's break it down with a real example using ABC stock. Suppose you're bullish about ABC and it's trading at $8.13. Buy a call option with a strike price of $7.50 expiring soon at $90 per contract or 90 cents per contract. If ABC hits $9 next month, exercising your option allows you to buy it at $7.50 and sell it at $9, netting a tidy profit. If not, the most you lose is the premium. This scenario highlights how strategic foresight, coupled with a clear understanding of options, can lead to significant financial advantages. Put options are like your financial shield. They give you the right, not the obligation, to sell a certain amount of an asset at a preset price before the option expires. This is particularly handy for protecting your stock investments against dropping prices. Imagine you own a stock that's at risk of falling in value. A put option serves as your safety net, letting you sell your shares at a guaranteed price no matter how far the stock drops. These options aren't just for protection, they're also a playground for speculators. Buying a put means you could profit from the decline in an asset's price without ever owning it. It's a low-cost strategy for potentially high returns, providing a safety layer and a speculative opportunity all rolled up into one. Put options can act as your market parachute, offering a predetermined sell price, which is the strike price, which you can use no matter how much the market value of the asset falls. This feature is invaluable in, in, this feature is invaluable in unstable markets where prices can plummet unexpectedly. If you're holding put options, you've effectively set a floor on the potential financial hit you could take. Furthermore, 
Put options open the door for speculative traders who bet on a stock or market's decline. This dual utility makes put options a crucial part of any savvy investor's toolkit, helping you navigate through bearish market waters with confidence. The price of put options is shaped by various factors, including the market price of the asset, the strike price, time until expiration, and the asset's volatility. Essentially, the more the market price of the asset drops below the strike price, the more valuable the put option becomes. This is because it allows the holder to sell at a higher price than the current market rate. Volatility is especially crucial. Higher volatility increases the chances of the option being profitable, thus raising its price. Time also, time also plays an important role. The more time until expiration, the more valuable the option, as there's more chance for favorable price movements. Trading put options means strategically anticipating market movements. Whether you're hedging against potential losses or speculating for profit, it begins with picking the right strike price and expiration. The balance between the cost of the option and potential market movements is key. Conversely, writing put options, which is selling them, suits those expecting stable or rising asset prices. It's a way to earn from premiums while accepting the risk that you might have to buy the asset at the strike price if the market dips unexpectedly. Exercising the put option means choosing to sell the asset at the strike price, often a move made when the market price is significantly lower. This decision should balance the intrinsic value of exercising the option against the premium paid to acquire it. Sometimes, however, selling the option before it expires can be more profitable, especially if it still holds considerable time value. This requires a nuanced understanding of market dynamics and option valuation. And for those diving deeper into investing, I give real-time trade alerts in my Patreon, and if you'd like to try my TradingView custom indicators, there's a free trial link in the description below. With that out of the way, let's go over an example. Let's say you buy a put option for XYZ company at a strike price of $180 with the stock currently at $194. If the stock price drops below 180, your option gains value, allowing you to either sell the shares at a profit or sell the option itself for a higher price. This strategy caps your risk to the premium paid, contrasting sharply with the unlimited upside if the stock plummets. Riding put options is a bullish strategy where you earn the premium but risk having to buy the stock at the strike price if it falls below that level. It's a way to generate income or potentially buy stock at a net lower price if the option is exercised. This requires a precise understanding of market conditions and option valuation. Choosing between in the money, which is ITM, and out of the money, OTM, put options depends on your investment strategy. In the money options cost more but offer immediate intrinsic value, suitable for those looking to hedge. Out of the money options are cheaper, providing higher potential returns on a significant market downturn but with greater risk of expiring worthless. Imagine you're at an auction, but instead of bidding on antiques, you're securing a special price for a stock. That's your strike price. In the realm of options, this price is the heart of the deal. It's the agreed upon price at which you can buy or sell a stock in the future. Calls and puts play by these rules, either giving you the right to buy or sell at this price. Let's talk about moneyness, a fancy term to describe where the strike price stands in relation to the market price. If your strike is lower than the market price for a call option, congratulations, you're in the money or ITM. This means you can buy the stock for less than it's selling for, a real bargain. For puts, it's the reverse. Out of the money or OTM means the market hasn't moved in your favor, but hey, there's always a chance. Now, let's spice things up by adding delta into our moneyness mix. Think of delta as the heartbeat of an options price movement. It tells us how much the price of an option will dance or change with a $1 move in the stock. For in the money, ITM options, the heartbeat is strong. They have a higher delta, meaning they move more in sync with the stock. Yes, in the money options may cost you more upfront compared to out of the money options, but here's the kicker. You get more bang for your buck because their value zooms faster than an OTM option as the stock price moves. Imagine you're eyeing options for future tech, which is trading at $100. You have two choices, an in-the-money call option with a strike price of $90, boasting a delta of 0.7, or an out-of-the-money call option with a strike price of 110 with a delta of 0.3. If future tech stock jumps to 101, here's what happens. The in-the-money option price will leap by 70 cents thanks to its delta. The out-of-the-money option, more like a cautious hop, will only increase by 30 cents. So while the in-the-money option costs more initially, its value aligns more closely with the stock's movements, offering a speedier ride on your investment dollar. 
This delta-driven dynamic is crucial for understanding why an in-the-money option, despite its higher price tag, can be a more potent choice for investors looking to closely mirror the stock's performance. It's all about finding the right balance between risk and reward, speed and cost. So there you have it. That's the essence of moneyness and the power of delta in the world of options. Whether you choose the fast-paced thrill of in-the-money options or the hopeful watch from the sidelines with out-of-the-money options, understanding these concepts is your first step towards savvy investing. Investing. Remember these pointers. Number one, the strike price is your golden ticket to buy or sell a stock at a specific price. Number two, in the money and out of the money are not just investor lingo, they're your indicators of potential profit. Number three, at the money means the strike price and the market price are playing a tight game of tag. Number four, the higher the delta, the faster the option price will move. When buying options, I normally like about a 0.7 delta. And in case you're wondering, when Nancy Pelosi buys options, they're typically about one year out and they're in a very high delta as well. And for those diving deeper into investing, I give real-time trade alerts in my Patreon. And if you'd like to try my TradingView custom indicators, there's a free trial link in the description below. With that out of the way, let's go over an example. Let's say Tech Innovators is trading at $100. If you have a call option with a strike price of $90, you're sitting pretty with an in-the-money option. But if your strike price was $110, you're hoping for a rally since you're currently out of the money. Options are a bit like a seesaw. The closer your strike price is to the market price, the more valuable your option might be. Time and volatility are the playground bullies here, constantly shaking things up. Let's cover an example where we explore the outcomes of two very strategic choices in the options market. Meet our contenders, investor A who prefers playing it somewhat safe and investor B who likes to walk on the wild side. Investor A's safe bet. Investor A picks a call option for Gadget World, currently trading at $95 with a strike price of $100, betting the stock will rise. The option has a delta of 0.5, meaning for every $1 increase in the stock, the option price goes up by 50 cents. Investor B's bold move. On the flip side, Investor B goes bold, choosing a call option with a strike price of $120. This option has a lower delta of 0.2, making its price less sensitive to stock price movements, but offering higher returns if the stock makes a significant jump. As the dust settles, Gadget World stock soars to $115 thanks to a groundbreaking product launch. Investor A's option is now in the money, gaining significant value and providing a comfortable profit from their investment. However, Investor B's option, despite the stock's impressive gain, remains out of the money, with the stock not reaching the ambitious $120 strike price before expiration. Investor B's option expires worthless, marking a loss on their daring bet. Let's go over the lessons learned. This example teaches us the delicate balance between risk and potential reward in the options market. Investor A's cautious approach paid off with a solid win, while Investor B's high-risk gamble didn't cross the finish line this time. Picture this, you've got a golden ticket, but it's not for Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. It's for something even sweeter, the chance to make or break in the stock market with options. But here's the catch, that ticket has an expiration date. Just like milk past its prime, an expired option won't do you any good. So what's the big deal about these dates? Stick around and I'll tell you why timing and options trading is everything. Now imagine walking into the grandest buffet you've ever seen, but instead of dishes, you've got expiration dates on those options. Monthly options, that's your hearty main course. Weeklies, a spicy appetizer you can't get enough of. Dailies, the shot of espresso to kickstart your trading day. And Leaps, the fine wine you savor for years. Each has its place at the table depending on your appetite for risk and reward. Diving into the strategy of selecting expiration dates is akin to mastering the art of timing and comedy. It's everything. When you're strategizing about options, you're not just picking dates out of a hat. You're aligning your financial goals with market rhythms. Think of each option like a ticking timepiece, each tick moving you closer to your moment of truth. If your strategy is short term, akin to sprinting through a thrilling 100 meter dash, then weekly or even daily expirations might be your best bet, allowing you to capitalize on quick market moves. However, for those with a marathoner's endurance, aiming for long-term growth or hedging positions, leaning towards monthly or leaps provides the breathing room needed for your assets to mature like a fine bourbon, revealing their true value over time. Yet, the strategic depth doesn't end at mere timeframes. It intertwines with understanding market volatility, event-driven strategies, and your personal risk tolerance. It's about reading the market's ebb and flow, much like a seasoned captain navigates the open seas, using the stars of economic indicators and corporate earnings 
earnings reports to steer clear of storms. Picking the right expiration date involves peering through your financial telescope, predicting how events like product launches or policy changes might sway stock. This anticipation combined with a keen awareness of one's financial horizon and stomach for risks crafts a strategy that's not just smart, but personalized. Like tailoring a suit, it's about custom fitting your options portfolio to your life not the other way around. The tale of expiration dates and option pricing is one for the ages, a nuanced romance that unfolds over the life cycle of an option. At the heart of this story is time value, the premium you pay for what could happen before the option expires. In the bloom of youth, when the option is far from its expiration, this time value is plump and juicy, brimming with potential. It's the hope that the stock will soar or plummet depending on whether you're holding calls or puts, and the longer the time frame, the more you pay for this hope. But as the stock clock ticks down, this time value begins to wither, dwindling to a whisper as expiration looms. This inevitable decay, known as theta, is a reminder that in options trading, time is a commodity as valuable as the stocks themselves. However, there's beauty in this decay, a strategy to be leveraged. For sellers of options, this time decay is the slow burning candle that lights the path to profit, as the options they sell shrink in extrinsic value with each passing day. For buyers, the challenge is to find the moment when the potential for an options increase in intrinsic value, that's the real movement in the stock price relative to the strike price, outpaces the loss of time value. This delicate balance between timing, market movement, and decay is the essence of the options dance. Mastering it requires not just an understanding of the mechanics of options, but a feel for the market's rhythm, the ability to anticipate the beat before it happens, and the wisdom to act before the final note is played. I personally sell a lot of cash secured puts and covered calls for weekly income, which takes advantage of the time decay. And for those diving deeper into investing, I give real-time alerts in my Patreon, and if you'd like to try my TradingView custom indicators, there's a free trial link in the description below. And now for some fun. The three musketeers of options are in the money, ITM, at the money, ATM, and out of the money, OTM, each with its own character and role in your trading strategy. In the money options are your valiant athos, reliable and strong, offering intrinsic value from the get-go because the stock price has already moved beyond the strike price in your favor. They're the safer bet, sporting a higher price for their inherent value, akin to playing for a guaranteed view in a high-rise hotel. You're paying upfront for the scenery you know you'll get. Yet their safety comes with a cost, a higher premium reflecting their likelihood to end profitably. On the other flank, we have the daring Aramis, the OTM options, with no intrinsic value at the outset, but holding a promise of considerable profit should the market swing your way. These are the high risk, high reward plays, akin to betting on a dark horse in a race. Their premiums are lower, making them accessible, but they require a sharp market upturn to breach their strike price and come into profit. And then there's Porthos, the at the money option standing bravely at the threshold where the stock price and the strike price meet. They represent a balance of risk and potential, their value tied closely to how the market breathes in the short term. For traders, they offer a middle ground, a blend of potential profitability and risk management. First off, what is an option premium? Think of it like the price tag on your ability to either buy or sell a stock at a predetermined price before a certain date. It's what you pay upfront and it's determined by a mix of factors we're about to explore. This concept is the cornerstone of trading options and understanding it is your first step towards mastering options trading. Now, let's dissect an option premium. It consists of intrinsic value, that's the actual tangible value if you exercise the option right now. And then there's extrinsic value, which is a bit more like betting on the future. It factors in the time left on the option and the stock's volatility. Together, these create the full price of the option, blending the real with the what could be. So what's driving the option price? Imagine you're shopping for a car. The price changes based on the model, features, and even the demand, right? Similarly, the price of an option premium is influenced by the stock's current price, how close the option is to making money, we call this moneyness, the time until the option expires, and the stock's volatility. Each of these factors either adds to or subtracts from the premium you're willing to pay. Let's focus on time and volatility for a moment. Think of time as an ice cube sitting in the sun. It's slowly melting away. That's your options time value, diminishing as you approach the expiration date. Volatility, on the other hand, is like predicting the weather. High volatility means the stock's price could swing wildly, increasing the potential for profit 
and the options cost. Next up, let's walk you through an example. And for those diving deeper into investing, I give real-time trade alerts in my Patreon. And if you'd like to try my TradingView custom indicators, there's a free trial link in the description below. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Imagine we're looking at the made-up company called Future Tech. It's a burgeoning tech firm with rumors of a groundbreaking product on the horizon. You've been keeping an eye on this company, believing its stock price is set to soar once the product is launched. To capitalize on this potential uptick, you decide to buy a call option. This call option has a premium, which is essentially your cost of entry into this speculative venture. The premium you're paying is influenced by your belief in future tech stock price increase. It's a fascinating mix of intrinsic value, that is, the value if you were to exercise the option immediately, and extrinsic value, which includes factors like the time until the option expires and how volatile the stock is expected to be. Now, let's break down this premium further. The intrinsic value is straightforward. If future tech stock is trading at $100 and your option strike price is $95, the intrinsic value is $5. That's a tangible, immediate value if you were to exercise the option right now. However, the more intriguing part is the extrinsic value. This includes the time value which dwindles as the option approaches its expiration, making each day a race against the clock. Then there's the implied volatility, reflecting the market's forecast of future tech stock price swings. If the market expects significant movements due to the rumored product launch, the options premium might be higher, representing the increased chance of the option ending up in the money. This blend of intrinsic and extrinsic values, along with your speculation on future tech success, forms the essence of your options premium. By purchasing this call option, you're not just betting on future tech success. You're doing so with a strategy that limits your risk to the premium paid while offering unlimited upside potential. It's a calculated gamble where your insights into future tech's industry and potential can turn a modest premium into a significant return. However, it's also crucial to remember that if future tech doesn't perform as expected, the premium you've paid is the maximum risk you face. This example encapsulates the allure and caution of options trading, high potential paired with controlled risk, making it a compelling tool for those who know how to navigate its complexities. This detailed exploration into an option premium through the lens of future tech aims to demystify the process, showing how calculated risks can be taken within the options market. It highlights the importance of understanding both the intrinsic and extrinsic values that compose an options premium, providing a solid foundation for any investor looking to delve into the dynamic world of options trading. Let's kick things off with what in the money option means. Imagine you've got a golden ticket. That's an in the money option. It's your opportunity to buy or sell a stock at a price that's already profitable. For call options, this means you can buy the stock for less than its current market price. For put options, you're able to sell for more than the market rate. Options aren't just about stocks. They can be for bonds, commodities, you name it, but they're popular with stocks for a good reason. They offer you the chance, but not the obligation to buy or sell at a set price, known as the strike price by a certain date. Every option comes with a price called a premium. This isn't a random number. It's influenced by the market price of the stock, how much time is left until the option expires, and how the strike price compares to the stock's current market price. Now, let's talk turkey with call options. You're bullish expecting the stock to rise. If the market price soars above your strike price, you're sitting pretty with an in-the-money option. The difference between the market price and your strike price? That's your intrinsic value, and it's what makes an option truly valuable. On the flip side, put options are your best friend when you expect the stock to fall. If the strike price is above the market price, your option is in the money. You want the stock to drop enough to cover your premium and then some leading to a profit. Everything has its ups and downs. ITM or in the money options might be more expensive due to their built-in profit potential, but they also come with the chance to make a tidy sum if the market moves in your favor. However, don't forget about those premiums and fees. They can eat into your profits. And for those diving deeper into investing, I give real-time trade alerts in my Patreon. And if you'd like to try my TradingView custom indicators, there's a free trial link in the description below. With that out of the way, let's go over an example. Let's dissect a more nuanced scenario with our hypothetical stock, Tech Forward. Imagine you're eyeing a call option for Tech Forward with a strike price of $100, while the current market price is $105. 
This option is clearly in the money, meaning if you exercise your option, you can buy shares at $100, a bargain compared to the market price. But why stop at understanding just the basics? As an investor, I often lean towards buying call options with around a 0.7 delta. And here's the scoop on why I like a 0.7 delta. It indicates that for every $1 move in the stock's price, the option price is expected to move by about 70 cents. This sweet spot means the option is responsive enough to price changes to be profitable, yet not so volatile that it's like a high stakes gamble. It strikes a balance, offering a potential for significant profit while mitigating some risks associated with options trading. Why does this matter to you, the investor? When you choose an ITM option with a 0.7 delta, you're essentially opting for an investment that's expected to move closely with the stock, but with the added leverage options provide. This leverage allows for greater profit potential compared to owning the stock outright. However, this strategy is not without its nuances. The cost of the option or the premium plays a crucial role. Returning to our tech forward example, if the premium is high, it could offset your potential profits. Thus, while the allure of in the money options with a 0.7 delta is strong due to their favorable balance of risk and responsiveness, the key to unlocking their potential lies in meticulous analysis and timing. It's not just about picking any in the money option. It's about finding those with the right delta that aligns with your market outlook and risk tolerance, ensuring your position for profitability even after accounting for premiums and other trading costs. First things first, let's break down what options are. Imagine options as your financial Swiss army knife, versatile tools that give you the right but not the obligation to buy or sell a stock at a specific price known as the strike price before a certain date. There are two types of options, call options for buying and put options for selling. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility, or in our case, a premium, which is the price you pay for this right. Now onto the star of the show, out of the money or OTM options. These are the underdogs of the options world. For a call option to be out of the money, the market price of the stock must be lower than the strike price. For a put option, it's the opposite. These options don't have intrinsic value, but that doesn't mean they're worthless. They're like lottery tickets that haven't won yet, but could hit the jackpot before their expiration date. You might be wondering, why bother with out of the money options if they sound like a long shot? Here's the deal. They're cheaper than their in the money counterparts, making them an attractive choice for traders betting on a stock's future price movement without breaking the bank. Plus, the thrill of turning a small investment into a significant profit is too enticing to ignore. But remember, it's crucial to manage your risks wisely. And for those diving deeper into investing, I give real-time trade alerts in my Patreon. And if you'd like to try my TradingView custom indicators, there's a free trial link in the description below. With that out of the way, let's go over an example. Imagine we're eyeing Tech Innovations, a fictional powerhouse currently priced at $50 per share. You might think, why not go for an out-of-the-money call option with a strike price of $50? $55. Sure, it's a gamble, but what happens when Tech Innovations unveils something revolutionary? If that stock skyrockets to $70, your previously out of the money option doesn't just inch into the money, it leaps in, offering potential profits that could make your head spin. This is where the thrill truly lies in options trading. However, it's not merely about the excitement. This strategy underscores a critical aspect of trading. Timing is absolutely crucial. Options have an expiration date and your ability to predict market movements within this time frame can be the difference between a noteworthy gain and a total loss. Now let's take this a step further. Suppose Tech Innovations does launch that groundbreaking product and the market responds with fervor, propelling the stock beyond our wildest dreams. Initially, your out of the money call options seem like a long shot, but as the market dynamics shift, what was once deemed risky is now on the verge of paying off. It's akin to watching a dark horse race ahead, defying odds and expectations. However, this race against the clock isn't just about luck. It's about informed decisions, understanding market trends, and sometimes a bit of patience. As the expiration date draws near, the value of our option hinges not just on tech innovation's performance, but also on the broader market movements and sentiment. Will our option cross the finish line in a blaze of glory, or will it falter at the last hurdle? This chapter isn't just a lesson in options trading. It's a testament to the strategic depth that options offer. With Tech Innovations, our fictional example, we see how an out-of-the-money call option can transform from an underdog to a champion, given the right market conditions. But remember, the key to mastering this trade lies not just in choosing the right stock or the right option, but in the timing and understanding that in the world of options trading, 
Fortunes can change as swiftly as the wind. So as you embark on your trading journey, keep a keen eye on the market, stay informed, and always be prepared to make your move before the clock runs out. Now, despite the allure of turning a small investment into a considerable return, I must confess, I'm not the biggest fan of out of the money options. The initial low cost of these options can be deceiving, making them seem like an attractive bargain for those looking to dip their toes into the options trading pool. However, it's crucial to understand that these bargains come with their own baggage, a high risk gamble. The stark reality is that unless the stock undergoes a dramatic price movement, the chances of an out of the money option leading to profit are really slim. Most of the time, these options expire worthless, leaving the investor with a 100% loss of their premium. This inherent risk paints out of the money options not as the golden tickets they're often mistaken for, but as speculative bets that require both a precise market prediction and perfect timing. While the potential for a high payoff is undeniable, the path is fraught with the likelihood of loss, underscoring the importance of approaching out of the money options with caution and a well thought out strategy. What happens when the expiration date approaches and your call option is out of the money? It's like Cinderella at the stroke of midnight. The magic disappears and the option expires worthless. This is the risk you play with OTM options. However, the journey doesn't end here. Every trade is a lesson learned and with each option you're gaining invaluable experience your next big win. First up, let's talk about what IV actually is. Imagine you're a weather forecaster, but instead of predicting storms, you're estimating how much a stock's price could swing in the future. That's IV in a nutshell, the market's forecast of a stock's potential movement. High IV means the market expects significant price changes, while low IV suggests a more stable outlook. Compare Tesla to Coca-Cola and you'll get what I mean. It's all about expectations, not guarantees. You might be wondering, why should I care about IV? Well, just like in weather forecasting, where knowing the chance of rain influences your decisions, in trading, understanding IV can help you make informed choices about which options to buy or sell. It's a crucial piece of the puzzle in options pricing, affecting how much you pay for an option and your strategy's potential profitability. Let's get into the nitty gritty of how IV influences options pricing. High IV usually means higher option premiums, and here's why. Options are all about probabilities. A higher IV indicates a greater expected range of movement, which translates to a higher chance of profit for the option holder. It's like betting on a horse with unpredictable performance. The odds and potential payout are higher. Have you ever heard of the VIX? It's like the pulse of IV in the market, tracking the expected volatility of the S&P 500. Traders use it to gauge market sentiment, whether it's fear or complacency, and adjust their strategies accordingly. By understanding the VIX, you're essentially getting a glimpse into the collective mind of the market. And for those diving deeper into investing, I give real-time trade alerts in my Patreon. And if you'd like to try my TradingView custom indicators, there's a free trial link in the description below. With that out of the way, let's go over an example. So how is IV actually calculated? It involves some financial alchemy, using models like Black-Scholes or Binomial to reverse engineer the market's expectations based on current option prices. It's a bit like solving a mystery where the options price holds the clues to uncovering IV. But instead of worrying about how to calculate the IV, just look it up for free at a site like cboe.com. Here's where we turn insight into action. Knowing IV can help you identify opportunities or risks in the options market. High IV, it might be a good time to sell options for a premium. Low IV, maybe it's buying time. Remember, IV is about market sentiment, not a crystal ball. Use it as a tool in your toolbox but not the only one. All right, folks, that's a wrap on IV. Remember, it's all about understanding the market's expectations and using that knowledge to your advantage. Stay tuned for our next video where we'll dive into covered calls and when to use them. Trust me, you won't want to miss this. Keep it real and I'll see you in the next video.